Hello Brains! ADHDers tend to be impulsive. And not just when we're buying office supplies. We are emotionally and socially impulsive too, which can make us a lot of fun when we're in a good mood. The problem is we are not always in a good mood. We get angry, we get frustrated, angry thoughts lead to angry actions, and we do things that end up costing us friendships, relationships, even our jobs. Afterward, we feel awful, we regret it, and then we do it again. It's not that we aren't smart or capable of making good decisions. As Dr. Russell Barkley puts it, ADHD is not an information deficit disorder. We know we shouldn't scream in the middle of class or hit another kid on the playground. We totally get that telling off our coworker is not acceptable behavior. The problem the problem is, we get so mad that we can't control it. You know what I'm talking about. The kind of feeling that builds in the pit of your stomach and makes your teeth clench and absolutely want to destroy the person who- <laughs> Well actually, I did the research and it's not just you. Everybody gets that upset. What? How? Then why am I the only one in detention? You aren't the only one who wanted to flip a table when your teacher assigned extra homework. You're just the only one who did. Why? Because your brain is faster than your brakes. To help me explain, cool science stuff. Turns out, there's a part of the brain whose job it is to help us hold back emotions and actions when expressing them might not be the best idea. It's called the anterior cingulate cortex, or ACC. In neurotypical brains, it activates anytime they experience an emotional or social conflict. As in, they might want to hang up on their boss, but that could have consequences. Their ACC picks up on the fact that they're about to do something that could be bad for them and buys them time to think about how they want to handle the situation. That way, the part of the brain that knows they need that job and have plans to retire someday is able to step in and suppress those impulses. In a fight, the ACC would be the friend holding you back while your other friends talk some sense into you. The problem is, in ADHD brains, the ACC doesn't always work that way. Or at all. In fact, according to Dr. Russell Barkley, in adult ADHD brains, the ACC appears to do nothing. Which means your other friend, the frontal lobe, might have some amazing wisdom to share. But with no one to hold you back, he won't have time to share it before you get punched in the nose. Dr. Barkley describes this as trouble with response inhibition. Dr. Halliwell calls it having a Ferrari engine brain with bicycle brakes. I call it being enthusiastic. Whatever you call it, it can be a problem for those of us with ADHD. So what's a brain to do? You gotta build up your brakes. Fortunately, there are plenty of ways to do this. Here are five ways we can help out our ACC. One, meditation. Hear me out. Meditation doesn't mean sitting still and clearing your mind of thoughts. It's just an opportunity to practice having thoughts and emotions without reacting to them. You know, the thing we're having trouble with. Plus, research has shown that meditation actually changes your brain, thickening the parts responsible for decision making, maintaining attention, and taking action in line with our goals. In other words, the parts affected by our ADHD. If you haven't tried meditating yet, don't worry, it's way easier than you think. I explain more in this video. Two. Mindfulness. Mindfulness is simply being aware of your thoughts, feelings, and your body's reactions without judging them. The great thing about mindfulness is if you only remember to meditate when you're already about to scream at somebody or eat a box of cookies, it's not too late to use this technique. One of the easiest ways to do this is to focus on your breath. That's it. That's enough to activate your ACC. There's a link to a cute video on belly breathing in the description below. There's also this video. Three. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, or CBT, is a kind of therapy that focuses on how you process your thoughts and feelings in the present moment. Are you starting to see a pattern here? All of these methods are about creating some space between an event or an emotion and your reaction to it. Basically what most people's ACC does for them automatically. CBT is especially great for dealing with depression and automatic negative thoughts, but programs have been developed specifically for dealing with ADHD, emotional self-regulation, and impulse control. Four, medication. Yeah, I don't talk about this much because I am clearly not a doctor. But I have to include it because for most people with ADHD, it's very effective. It can not only help us focus, it also helps with self-control. I'll include links to more information in the description below, but if you are considering medication, talk to a doctor. Which I am not. Finally, five. 
Exercise. Research suggests that physical activity can make a huge difference as well. Aerobic exercise, like running, swimming, or dancing, seems to have the most impact on ADHD symptoms overall, while mind-body exercise, like yoga, seems to have the biggest impact on self-regulation. So the next time you need to have a difficult discussion, try doing it in Downward Dog. And six. If you find yourself judging yourself, remember that the emotions you're feeling are probably totally normal. You just have to work on your breaks. Of course, it also helps to have a backup plan for times when your breaks might fail. I'll go into that in another video. That's it for this week. Thanks for making it all the way through. This was a lot of information to cover, but really important. Let me know how your breaks have failed or saved you. Comment below or on Facebook or Twitter and leave me a question for question time. If you like what I do, subscribe. And if you love what I do, consider donating to our Patreon page so we can make even more videos. Bye brains. Question time. How do you approach someone in order to make friends? Your crush specifically. Love. True love. I think it's important to consider the timing. Probably don't talk to them when they're in the middle of something or clearly want to be left alone. Wait till you think they might be receptive to conversation and then try to find out what you have in common. Ask them questions about themselves to see if you guys have the same taste in music or share a hobby. For this reason, a great place to meet is in a class or a group that's dedicated to something you're interested in. For instance, Edward and I met at a writer's group. What do I do about having a lot to do and not enough time to do it? It helps to focus on stuff that's important but not yet urgent. My video on the priority matrix explains why. Speaking of which, remember, Edward promised to do an FAQ and A about me if we hit a thousand hashtag ibnews. So keep working on yours and post about them when you do. And remember, in case of emergency, shake glass.